now since the fall of last year and have been wonderful. We're in the 23rd chapter of the book of Joshua. And the title of this message is Remember. Remember. Do we all remember when we came to know the Lord? Is, is there a time in your life? I, I remember it so well. My grandmother had, had been hit by a car. She was, I watched her die for a week. And I, my heart was broken because that was my mother. She was the one that raised me. And I remember that. I remember the smell of the hospital. I remember the smell of the hospital room. I remember her voice. For years, I would remember her voice as she'd say, Jimmy. And I look so forward to seeing her someday. I pray that I'll see her with the Lord. I don't know what I've done without her in my life. My mother gave me up to her when I was one day old. I was too much bothered. But she was never, I was never too much bothered for her. Remembering. Her death brought me to my Lord and Savior's knees, on my knees to his feet. I remember that. I remember so many times in my life that I've come so close to, to death and to dismemberment and uh, very, very, very dangerous times in the oil fields and refineries working before the name OSHA was ever, expen ever invented. You should have worked back in those times, people. It was a very dangerous time very dangerous times. You look back and you look through church history and you see the things that happened in church history. It names the names of martyrs. I am always struck by a book called The Ecclesiastical History of the Churches of the Valleys of the Piedmont by Samuel Moreland when the Catholic Church went in there and murdered those people and burned their Bibles. The names of those people still are written down in pen and ink today. Their lives, some of them were very old, some of them in their 80s and 90s, living in villages away from other people so they could worship God and praise His name and preach His word like they are now in the Islamic world. Being in the Catholic world at that time was just as, just as dangerous, or, well, same as living in the Islamic world. Death around the corner at every moment. Death around the corner. We look at the Word of God and we see the promises in God's Word. We're studying church history also. The one promise is that the Lord will be here with His church until the end of this age. It said, The gates of hell shall not wrestle her down, and we as members of God's churches are promised that there will be believers until the Lord comes back. We live in the age of Laodicea, and the churches are lukewarm, and, and they want to worship God in a worldly way in worldly churches. And it says that in the book of Laodicea, they will be, do things that are right in their own eyes, as it says. In the chapter third chapter of the book of Joshua, Joshua tells them, remember, 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 I know Marilyn has told me this story many times. Her mother beat her nearly to death and she was in her 20s. And God spoke to her heart, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Crying and no help. Father wouldn't help her. 
Nobody would help her. She even called the church where she had gone when she was a little girl. They would not help her. People at her work, she was the executive secretary. People at her work wondered what was wrong with her. She was all black and blue all over. The mother's love, she did not know. Remember. Now it came about after many days when the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their enemies on every side. And Joshua was old, advanced in years. We can remember that. See, we can look back at Joshua and we can look at him old and advanced in years. And now I look, I remember when my teachers were 75 years old and, and I looked upon them as, as on one foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel. Many of them. And now I'm there. I'm there. Remember. There's so many things to remember in our lives. And Joshua is calling to the remember. And Joshua called for all Israel, their elders and their heads of their judges and their authors, and said to them, I am old and advanced in years. And you have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God, he is he who has been fighting for you. When Israel went into the land of Canaan, the land uh, that means possession, when they went into the land that God was going to give to them, God fought the battles. As long as they followed him, God fought the battles. See how I have apportioned to you these nations which remain in inheritance for your tribes. With all the nations which I have cut off from the Jordan, even unto the great sea toward the setting of the sun. And the Lord your God, Jehovah your Elohim, he shall thrust them out from before you and drive them from before you and you shall possess their land just as the Lord your God promised you. Possession, come on. In Genesis 9:27, God promised that this land would be given to them and that these Canaanites would be their servants to serve and to build this land and then they would walk into it because the Canaanites were a very vicious, wicked people. Some of them repented. Some of them became adherents to the Jewish faith. Be very firm then, and keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, so that you may not turn aside from the right hand or to the left, in order that you may not associate with these nations. God demanded total segregation. Total segregation. Now, many of the... Uh, Missionary Baptists and Old Southern Baptist churches, they, they preach segregation on these, on these points. But we're not talking about the, the segregation between blacks and whites. We're talking about the segregation between these heathens and God's people. And they said if se segregation is not taught in the Bible, nothing's taught in the Bible. Well, they bent that a little out of proportion, of course. But God demanded total segregation here. with these nations which will remain among you and or mention the name of their gods or make anyone swear by them or serve them or bow down to them but you are to cling to the Lord your God as you have done to this day cling to the Lord your God it took a long time to wash heathenism and idolatry out of Egypt that the, out of Israel when they were down there in Egypt for 400 years. It took a whole generation. The superstitions. For the Lord has driven out great and strong nations from before you, as for you no man has stood before you to this day. Not the giants either. Not all, not any of the great kings. Remember back then every city was a kingdom. And they'd gone into every city and taken it over. God promised that. All the way from the book of Genesis. One of you men puts to flight a thousand. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you 
just as he promised you. So take diligent heed to yourselves to love the Lord your God. Love him. Look what he's done for you. You know, sometimes when you, you take a child, you raise a child, you help neighbors, you do whatever you can, and then they turn against you. That's a hard thing when you see that. Israel is like a rebellious child that turned against a very loving father. One of your men puts the flight a thousand, the Lord your God is he who fights for you just as he promised you. So take diligent heed. For if you ever go back and cling to the rest of these nations, these which remain among you, the and marry with them, so that you associate with them, and they with you, now, God's people intermarried with some of these nations, didn't they? Ruth the Moabitess, Rahab the harlot. That's okay, because these people converted. They converted. Remember Judah? Judah married wrong. And the only woman that he had children by that went into the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ was Tamar, his daughter-in-law. He married wrong. That's out the lineage of the Messiah. No, that's for certainty that the Lord your God will not continue to drive these nations out from over you, but they shall be a snare and a trap to you, and a whip to your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from all the good land which the Lord your God has given to you. God is prophesying what he's going to do to these people if they adhere to their gods. You remember Jacob? Jacob loved Rachel, didn't he? And Rachel had been taught to, to worship idols. And she stole her father's idols and brought them with her when Jacob left that land. And Jacob told Laban, he said, if you find those idols with any of my people, you kill them. And that was his wife that had them. And later on, Jacob said to his family, wash your clothes, take a bath, and let's go to Bethel, the house of God, and get rid of all of those idols out of your sight. Get rid of them. And the one that, woman that he loved was worshiping idols. Now behold, today I am going the way of all the earth. And you know, in all of your hearts, and in all of your souls, that not one word of all the good words which the Lord your God spoke concerning you has failed you. All have been fulfilled for you and not one of them has failed. Joshua's last words to these people. Remember, remember, remember. Remember the Lord, remember how he brought you through so many trials and tribulations in this life. I just look back and I am astounded. I am amazed. I am astonished how God has got me this far. And this last deal in September of being poisoned with that propane, I am suffering from that. But you know what? I shouldn't be alive. God brought me through that. I'm suffering from it. It may kill me in the long run or disable me totally. I lost my hearing. My eyesight's terrible now. Tremors terrible, muscle spasms, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. And it came about just as all the good words of the Lord your God spoke to you have come upon you, so he the Lord will bring upon you all the threats until he has destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. You didn't earn it, it's God's land. And it would always be God's land. Mm -hmm. If he had that hired out to sharecroppers when they were taken off, it was their land. It's still they don't have all that land back today because they've been disobedient. They're disobedient even unto this day. They ought to read this, these verses right now. Remember, Israel, remember 
Each and every one has to remember how God has brought you through. Have you been out on the street and homeless? Without any place to live or stay? And yet God has brought you through. Whoever you are out there in the world. Maybe you're in some foreign nation where you can't even speak the name of Jesus. And you are homeless and you're running from house to house. God is with you. God is with you. When you transgress the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and you go serve other gods and bow down to them, then the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and you shall perish quickly from off the ground which he has given to you. Remember. Remember. Remember where you are today. Remember how God got you there. Remember the gifts that God has given you. Remember the love of God for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Remember. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might have life through him. The world is already condemned because we seek darkness rather than light. For in grace you are having been saved through faith, and that is not a, yourself. The faith didn't come through you, it's from God. For in grace you are having been saved through faith, and that not of yourself is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You're here, you're standing in Christ because of Christ, not because of you, not because of any of your own efforts at all but because of the grace and love and faith of God in you. That he placed in you. You didn't earn it. You can't work to keep it. It's by grace that you are saved. The Bible says, For whosoever call, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise. That's a promise wherever you are in the world. Father, we commend this message to you and to your safekeeping throughout all the world that you touch your people's lives wherever they are in trouble and out of trouble in health and sickness and Father I pray for Gloria I pray for Otis I pray for all of those out there that are ill at this time that you give them the strength and, and please bring them through these illnesses that they might glorify you with their lives in Jesus' name I pray, and please forgive me where I fail you.